I've noticed that Africans keep doing the same businesses over and over again. When most Africans think of businesses, they often think of things like hair business, shopping business, that's clothes and shoes, and even electronics. That's people basically repeat the same and the same businesses every day. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you keep wearing the same dress that you love? And at times it's not because it's the only dress you have. You have other dresses, but the fact that that dress might be closer to you or very visible in your wardrobe, it makes you wear the dress dress more often. That also applies in other sectors of our lives and business is not an exception. So I've noticed this with business people in Africa and I don't know if it is because they just want to play safe, they don't want to bear the risk of venturing into new sectors or is it just the fact that they don't have new business ideas? Because when I look at the money they inject into some of these businesses, I want to think that it's not a problem of capital. And to crown it all, I've seen a lot of diasporas still investing in Africa in the same businesses. So I've tried to fathom this out and I don't really think money is the problem or playing safe is the problem. I want to believe that it sees maybe the lack of the business ideas. So in this video, I am going to be giving you five business ideas that you will be the very first to establish in Africa. I am Elvin Chick and my mission on this channel is to make sure that you attain your financial independence as soon as possible. You are watching Africa today and we are starting right now. So the first business idea I am going to be talking about here is the establishment of a vending machine. If you don't know what a vending machine is, this is a self-service machine that dispenses goods to clients upon the chipping in of a coin or a token. That is, you just need to go there and put in some coin and you get what you want in return. This machine is quite profitable and let me get into some of the advantages of this business. This business has a very low startup cost for all you need to do is buy your machine and start your business because it doesn't need any experience or skill, thereby you don't need any workers to work for you. So it is a self-service based business. And another good thing with this business is that it is actually mobile. At any given time, you could displace it to whatever spot you want it to be. So the trick is you target high traffic areas to put your vending machine there at a given period, depending on what your machine is dispensing. So is it a snack vending machine, cold drink vending machine, hot drink vending machine, or hot food vending machine? So it basically depends on what you are going to be selling. You are going to be targeting places depending on what the needs are going to be in those areas. So let's take for example, there is a sports competition or football competition somewhere. You could simply displace your vending machine to that area. So vending machines are more suitable for places like parks, restaurants, waiting areas, playgrounds, and you name it. Another good thing with the vending machine business is that it is easily scalable. You can buy as more machines as you want and contrary to other other businesses, you could scale up without necessarily needing many people. You could just assign each worker to maybe displace the machine and position it where it has to be. That said, it is a very good passive income option because once you've bought your machine, if you don't have the time, you could just assign one or two workers to be displacing the machine for you and stationering them where the services are needed. Or you could still even have a fixed place where your machine stands every day and everyone knows that they could get there anytime, buy their products from your machine. And one thing that makes this business so so profitable is its flexibility yes this business unlike others is not time limited that is a machine could be placed in a particular area and works 24 7 that is be it in the morning afternoon evening people could buy their drinks or their food whenever they want to which is different from the regular shops where you will need workers to serve your clients and once it's time for them to go home the business has to be closed no with the vending machine business you could be making money throughout the day and night. And the most profitable vending machine actually is the bulk vending machine. This is because it actually dispenses various goods. It could dispense things like candies, toys, gumballs, and you name it. So with such innovations across the world, I don't know what Africans are still waiting for. This is something that people are using to cash out real money. 
Imagine having a business where you don't need to employ workers, where you don't need to rent a physical shop, but you make money throughout the day. Isn't that a good deal? And these machines are so, so popular, especially in Asian countries. These people are on another level. The Asians are so innovative. Do you know that in Japan right now, there are vending machines, the bulk vending machines that dispense rice, shoes, watches, cameras. In fact, those people are so innovative and have such genius minds that I'm just in awe whenever I look at Japanese innovations. And if there's one business that would be very suitable in Africa, considering the fact that we've got very bad customer service most times, the vending machine is a must have in Africa. That's in my opinion, by the way, because it's going to solve a lot of problems. I can imagine how happy I would be knowing that I could buy something and get served without having to deal with a rude worker. Honestly, this is a game changer for Africans. I can foresee how much money we could make if we have such machines in Africa. So please, if you have some money kept in your bank account right now, please, this is one of the businesses you could rush and grab that money to establish in Africa. Now, the next business business idea here is horticulture. Yes, you got me. When we talk of horticulture, we mean the cultivation of flowers. Yes, beautiful flowers. This business is almost in existence in Africa, but what people don't know is that it is actually needed right now. Back in the days, most Africans used to not really see the need to cultivate flowers in large quantities simply because people didn't really maybe have the need for that. But nowadays, let me assure you that a lot of Africans African youths are doing things differently and are seeing things differently. Most Africans now love to use fresh flowers for their weddings. Unlike back in the days where people were just satisfied with plastic flowers and didn't really care, nowadays we love fresh flowers. I remember back in the days when if you would dare think of offering a flower to an African lady, she would be like, oh, I'm not an Oyibo, okay? I'm not a Nasara, as we call it here in Cameroon. That's to them, it was basically useless, all right? That had to do with the romantic sector. But now, where the African girls love flowers is for their weddings, for their occasions, okay? People love to use fresh flowers now, even for their decor at events and at home. And we know a lot of Africans throw parties right now. We've got weddings, baby showers, and photo shoots. A lot of people now use flowers for their photo shoots, especially for their babies. I remember looking for fresh flowers so much when I wanted to do my twin babies photo shoot. I searched for fresh flowers so much and to get them was hell. And when I finally got them they were so expensive there's this girl's advert i stumbled on on facebook and by the time i reached to her the flowers were exhausted thus she had run out of flowers by the time i needed them and i had to do a lot of search to spare you the details do you know that i actually spent a whooping 15 dollars for three tiny flowers that's a lot honestly i was literally paying five dollars for one flower and if it is so expensive it's just an indication to you that there is lack of flowers in Africa and that's a need that you could step in and fit the hole. The need is actually there. Someone like me, I would love to use fresh flowers for my events and a lot of Africans do right now. Do you know that some Africans go to the extent of importing fresh flowers for their occasions which is much more expensive? cultivation of flowers will be a game changer for any entrepreneur in Africa right now. And I know what I'm talking about. And that said, it might interest you to know that we have a database of suppliers of certain products already. So if you're interested in getting into contact with suppliers and distributors of certain goods, please do well to reach out to us through our email or you could see subscribe to our membership where we have an option there for our members to join a WhatsApp group where we put together these people in order for them to network together. And there are lots of opportunities you are going to be finding there. It might interest you that we've started investing in land banking in the whole of Africa already. We've had a pretty good collection at hand. I'm talking to you right now. If you are watching from Kenya, there's available land in Kenya right now in hectares. When we talk of hectares, we are talking of hundreds of hectares available for you. If you are interested in embarking on cultivation of any product, you can consult us to know whether that will be suitable in your area. And like I said, our case study right now is Kenya because we we have huge land available for Kenyans already. That land will be favorable for those who want to embark on flower cultivation or in horticulture. So do well to contact us if you are interested. And talking about land banking, if you're interested in knowing more about land banking, I don't mind making a video wherein I expand the topic for you. So if you're interested, you could as well comment in the comment section, land banking. And if there are more people who've indicated land banking in the comment section, I am definitely going to be making a video on land 
investment banking for you guys. Now, the third business idea here is something that is so dear to me because I really see the need for this in Africa. I am talking about the retirement home business. I had mentioned this idea in one of my videos and that was in an old video and we didn't have a lot of traffic by then. But I am bringing it back here because I know how important this business idea is. Let me tell you why. Back in the days in Africa, I remember growing up with a lot of people at home. We had not only our moms who had all their time to cater for us and our fathers, in fact, the whole family as a whole, they had the time to do that. We, the children, would go to school in the morning and our dads would go to work, but our moms would stay home and take care of the family. And I remember some aunties and uncles also living with us in our homes. So there was always people at home. And we used to have grandparents coming to live with us from time to time. And in some homes, some grandparents would live there till their last breath. Now, here's the difference. Nowadays in Africa, a lot of women have nine to five jobs. And for those who don't, they have a business they are running out of their home. So that makes them not have that time to stay at home and cater for grandparents. In most African homes right now, in the mornings, the husband and the wife will be leaving for their job sites and the kids would be leaving for school. All the uncles and aunties are busy. They aren't there to fill the gap. So basically, when you have your dad or your mom living with you and that they are of age already, there's basically no one left home to cater for them. That's where the need for the retirement home business steps in. I know for an African watching this video right now, you could start thinking of prejudice that the society is going to think that, oh, if you send your parents to a retirement home care institute, that means you don't really have time for them. You don't care for them. You don't love them enough. I know the African mentality, right? But now let's be objective here. Wouldn't you rather send your parents in a place where they will be well catered for, where someone will be responsible for making sure they take their medications on time, they take their food on time, they get to rest on time. Basically, they have a more organized and well-structured lifestyle. Wouldn't you prefer that for your parents than staying with their parents in your home and not having even one hour to spend with them per day? So now for you, the entrepreneur interested in embarking on such a business in Africa, let me give you the secret of how to go about it in order for people to adhere to the business seamlessly. You will need to do two things. The first thing you have to do in this business is to allow a lot of flexibility at the level of visiting hours. Yes. We, the Africans, have this solidarity culture. We are so sociable and we've grown up to care for one another so much. So for people not to think that, that such a home is going to be distancing them from their parents, you need to allow flexibility at the level of visiting hours. They need to know that they could come whenever they want and visit their parents. The second thing that you need to be tolerant at is to make sure that they can feel free to do whatever they want to do with their parents. They could visit their parents and bring them the African homemade cooked food. They still love to take medications from herbalists. So if you allow them the flexibility to visit their parents with such things, they are going to quickly adhere to your business. So basically, you are just creating a structure in which people will be bringing their parents to your institute for maximum care, but at the same time, they don't need to feel distant from them. So if you invest in a retirement home business in Africa, I am sure you are going to be making lots of money because Africans now have begun seeing the need for such services. So if you want a business that you will be the first to start in Africa and you will have little or no competition. This is the right business for you. I can bet you that if you start this business in Africa right now, in no time at all, you will be sitting at the comfort of your home and sipping some wine and looking for Ervin Chick to thank her. Now, if you found value in this video so far, which I know you have, please do well to subscribe to the channel. That's the least you could do for us, all right? Also endeavor to like this video and share it with with your loved ones for that's the only way you could indicate to youtube that we are doing something great and they will in turn share our videos and that's how the channel will be growing i'm sure you don't mind doing that right so please do it right away and let's get to the next point now the next business idea here is an automobile car rental business or car mortgage business or car credit business whichever you want to call it just call it for you the diasporans watching this video you know what i'm talking about 
you are into that system abroad, you know how easy it makes life for people to be capable of purchasing a car without paying cash. And we know how this system functions. Once you've gotten a credit card that could permit you to get a car, you are given the car and the money is being deducted from your revenue every month or as agreed. That's basically what we are talking here about. In Africa, everything you see is paid cash. Though it has its advantages, it is also very strenuous for people because a car is actually a necessity. In Africa right now, most people can't really afford a car because they will need to pay it cash. And that makes them go maybe late to their workplaces because they would have to be using public transports and running helter skelter from here to there. It makes life difficult. Imagine a parent who wakes up in the morning and has to be at work by 8 a.m. and that parent has to go and drop their kids at school before going to their workplace. That's just an example. So let's take another instance. You are an entrepreneur, a beginner in Africa, a startup entrepreneur in Africa. You've got business deals to close, right? But then there's a certain way you need to present yourself. You can't be going for a certain business negotiation of a certain scale or caliber, then you don't own at least a car for your displacement. Those are certain technical things that go a long way to build your brand, all right? You could have the intellect and the capacity to thrive in a certain domain. But the fact that you don't have the charisma needed to close certain deals, you are going to be facing a lot of limitations. So just imagine a case wherein you have a business deal of let's say a hundred thousand dollars to close and you dress up nicely in a suit and you put on nice shoes and you are fit looking great for the deal. But then upon arrival, you are alighting from a motorbike or a cab. Just imagine what could be going on in the minds of your business partners. They won't necessarily say something to you, but it will be very weird. And that alone might go a long way to affect your business negotiation. It could basically drop your bargaining power. Well, those who are into business are going to understand what I am explaining here better. But the idea is there are certain things in life that are actually necessities for anyone who wants to go to a certain level and a car is one of those things such businesses are quite popular in other parts of the world but are still very little or non-existent in africa so one thing with this business is that it is very very expensive to establish all right but if you've got the money or you are good at networking you could get partners that you could partner with and establish such a business to help africans and if you have good public relations you could also get closer to car manufacturing companies and make deals with them to set up such a business in Africa and make it accessible to Africans. And that leads us to our next point, which is somehow related to this one. This is the automatic car wash business. Yes, this is a business that is so smart driven and innovative. With this business, you basically need less workers compared to the ordinary car wash we know because the cars are not washed by workers. They don't use the hand pump to wash the cars. It's basically a system wherein the car drives in and it has automatic machines that only water to the car and basically do the washing in no time so with this business not only you are going to be saving up on salaries you are also going to be saving up time because it is done faster than human beings would do and one good thing with this business is that the quality of your customers cars are going to be maintained and they would have no reason going to other places other than yours for we know most car wash points workers use substandard material to wash cars and often scratches the paint work but now with the automatic car wash which comes with special fiber that delicately washes your car, thereby avoiding any damages on your paintwork. Even if you charge an additional $2 over what others charge, you are still going to be making lots of money. Generally, people charge about $4 for a car wash in Africa. But if you just add $2, that is washing your cars for $6, people will still rush to you because looking at the value you provide with your automatic car wash and the quality of your service that is far much more better than the others, people are going to be coming. And like I said, automatic car wash is faster with this business people generally make an average of a hundred thousand dollars per year and you could make even more because with this business you have an advantage of setting up other mini businesses around for example you know when people come to wash their cars they would often like to sit somewhere and maybe sip something or eat something so you could seize this opportunity to make a mini restaurant or a mini fast food beside your car wash alongside maybe a drinking spot where people could sit and sip something while waiting for their car to be washed so this is basically also a small business 
business empire that you can create around how does that sound now if you've watched this video till the end you know what to absolutely do you need to like comment and share this video with your loved ones so that a lot of people get to know about these things and the more we embark on them the more africa will be changing positively that said thanks for watching this video and i will see you on my next one